Ladies and gentlemen, the Alfords. Where the theme music at? <laughs> On May 14th, I slid in her DM. I remember that day, my life forever changed. Engaged on October 28th. Married October 29th. We are the Alfreds. Hi everybody. My name is Stefan Alford. And my name is Iman Alford. And we are back with another video. Yes, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, babe. I know. <laughs> We've been going through, babe. We dealt with you getting sick, and then <laughs> I got sick, and yeah. then we were traveling. Mm -hmm. We were on Dear Future Wifey podcast. Yeah. That was exciting. That was exciting. And what else would happen? We had another interview here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So we just been having a lot of going on. <laughs> and then also it was your birthday. Yeah, the big B day. Mm -mm -mm. When I tell y'all, she took care of me. Like, I cannot wait. We got to do a vlog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You down? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to do a vlog um, to show. How special your birthday weekend was. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. I'm ready to get into this, yes. this topic. Mm. So today we're going to talk about our singleness journey. Mm -hmm. we'll share a little bit about our story. Don't take and... me back. <laughs> Don't take me back. <laughs> we got to talk about it. All right. We get a lot of questions yeah. on what was life like when we were single. That's true. We do get a lot of questions. Okay. So first, babe, what I want to know is what age did you get, did you desire to be married? So I remember this one time, like I really wanted to be married. Like, and I, and I wrote down this dream age. My dream age was honestly 30. Mm -hmm. I felt by 30, at least I'll be done with college and then I'll be in my career, uh, fully enrolled and no. That's not how it worked out. What age were you when you said you wanted to be near the 30? So I was, I think it was freshman year in, in college. So I was like 18 or 19. Oh, okay. And so I was in my mind. Yeah, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was planning, I'm like, okay, maybe if I work hard these next like 10 or 11 years, mm -hmm. you know, grind it out, see where God takes my life. And by 30, we should have it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> so 30 was your year. 30 was my year. My year. What was yours? So I was 22 when I was like, okay, I'm really ready to like be married. Okay. But I said I want to be married by 25. Wow. <laughs> so I try to give myself three years to make this happen. Got you. 25. <laughs> 25. I'm trying to remember 25. Um, yeah, no, I think I probably <laughs> was not in the right mindset. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't in the right mindset either. It's really? just crazy when I think about it. If, thinking about where I was and how I was mentally at 25, yeah. I'm just so thankful that I did not get married or meet you at 25. Woo! Now, the Lord knew just to keep you covered a little bit longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was like, let me just hide you, let me plant yeah. you because yeah. you're not ready. No, see, the, pre the preservation. <laughs> Came out well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. okay, so 18, mm -hmm. you said, I want to be married by 30. Right. Okay, so did you just forget about it? Like, <laughs> like what? I'm trying to make this right Okay. Why? Because I'm, I'm 36. Well, now I just turned 37. You just turned 37. So was marriage on your mind from 18 to 37, or did it start from 30? to 37. No, I wanted to be married by 30. I, I wouldn't have minded, you know, just courting someone very seriously leading up to that. And mm -hmm. if we got married before 30, mm -hmm. then I would have been okay. Okay. It just so happened that in my mind, I'm like, okay, worst case scenario. Oh, 30, okay. 30 years <laughs> old. <laughs> Not worst case. <laughs> but I'm in the worst, best now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the best, best scenario right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're going through life at 18 years old. Yeah. You're not taking anyone serious until you turn 30? No. Um, I actually was taking someone serious, <laughs> whoever deserved it. Okay. You know? So 
it's, it was just hard. I remember <laughs> I was away in, in school. You know, I went to um, college in Macomb, Illinois. It was like three hours away. So I'm already away from my family. Um, and I'm, I'm in the mode of trying to graduate. I'm trying to finish school. 18, I was fresh, freshman year in college. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had four years to finish. And I was very focused you mm -hmm. know, on my education. And if I did find someone during that time, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded, mm -hmm. you know, courting because, you know, I'm doing in the college realm, especially in the dorm room life, mm -hmm. like you're overly exposed to like parties and just, um, just it's a lot of like downtime mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. You got studies and you got downtime. Mm -hmm. So during that downtime, I would have loved to at least, you know, have someone that I can talk to on the phone and just court, whether they would be there or away. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't work out like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so tell us about it. So. Yeah. So what I decided to do is just uh, pretty much I finished up school and, um, you know, it was, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was very hard, but it was so timely because I began to develop my own personal relationship with God, mm. you know, and learn about like the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. his leading and just, you know, decision making is very key and huge back then. So I remember, you know, being with my, my boys and, you know, doing that phase, everybody's on like, all right, let me see um, if I can find my girl or my so, lady. What, it's still 1819. This is still 1819. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, you know, just kind of graduating a little bit past that, you know, I've adopted a, a career. Like I used to like, say I wanted to do something in business mm -hmm. and so I got into the entertainment field a little bit and um, I signed with an agency you know to do some some modeling acting and honestly that took a lot of focus between that and studying for school mm -hmm. so it shifted my mindset from just you know trying to find you know my significant other and and date and date or court seriously okay. I'm, I'm really big on courting mm -hmm. you know but at around 18, I wasn't ready like to really court back then. I yeah. just wanted to meet someone who I can just gel with and, you know, someone who can, you know, be my partner. Okay. Um, and then like, so mid twenties, you know, I felt, started to feel like, man, it'd be nice like to start at least working on like my future wife, like mm -hmm. having someone there. But it's just, it was tough, you know, like the day that we live in is so different. And I would have these conversations with my, my mom and dad, like, you know, the way y'all grew up, the it's era y'all grew up is totally <laughs> different than our era. Yeah. You know, this day and age, you got to check a lot. You we know, do. backgrounds. Were well, you doing background checks? You know, uh, I didn't have access. <laughs> okay, I, I, didn't, I didn't have access <laughs> like I do now. No. What? <laughs> I got nah, you did a background <laughs> check on me. I had to check you out. You know, as a realtor, you know, you got this access to certain a resources. Check on me. And I'm like, we're jamming real hard. <laughs> you know, I got to make sure that I'm looking at all angles. <laughs> I was just, oh, we're going to stay focused. We're going to stay focused. Oh, this is a topic at hand. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now you're in your 20s, you talk to your mom, like it's getting really hard out here. What age is this like? Yeah, so mid-20s. Mid I think it really started to hit because I'm like, man, you know, I I kind of have an idea of what I want to do with life, but I still wasn't there. Okay. And I'm telling you, like, every man, before he really takes you serious, like, he's going to want to know, like, his sure direction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, real talk. Like, he's going to want to know that. Mm -hmm. And if he's not there yet and he's confused by his identity, it's just going to be hard. It is. It's going to be you both trying to figure it out. And then the, I see, like, women, and I hear women always trying to create ideas for a man. Like, how about this? And then, you know, then if the guy is not passionate <laughs> about it. You just then, made, you just triggered. I just triggered you. <laughs> <laughs> I see you do. <laughs> but that's the natural. A woman is a natural help mate. Like, yes. you want to help, you know, solidify mm -hmm. in a way the relationship. So, but it's hard because you can't solidify the man. <laughs> <laughs> the man uh, got to be the man. Trauma. Everything is Everything coming up right now. Everything is Right is now. it? Ooh, so okay. I, I, I knew that I, I didn't want to take on that type of responsibility and courting serious. Um, even though it was my desire, it was, you know, in my 
my list, my vision to be married. Um, but seriously, like I'm like by 30, it should it should be about there. Okay. So um, it still wasn't there. So I had been through about three. <laughs> okay, three so four, 30 comes. Yeah, three or four relationships at that point. <laughs> 30, 30 comes. <laughs> no, it's okay. And I'm like, okay, all right. Well, it's 30. Lord, what is going on? <laughs> It's just crazy to see like the difference. Like I'm gonna share my journey, but it's just different to hear a man perspective yeah. and a woman's perspective. Okay. Yeah. So you know, my my desire was always to be married. And one of the things I used to always tell God, like, God, you know, I want my relationship, I want, I want our marriage to give you glory, so I'm willing to wait on it. You know, I didn't want to settle just for any type of relationship. Okay. Because it's easy, you know, for you to just get in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's for most people. They can mm -hmm. get in a relationship. But I wanted a relationship filled with purpose, um, destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been instilled that in me growing up. Okay. You know, that you should find your purpose partner. So you think about all of this in your singles? All of this in my singles? Oh, we totally different. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> my, I mean, my father, he, he trained me up that way. And my yeah. mom trained me up that way. So I saw them flowing in their purpose and in ministry. So I'm like, man, this is cool to see this. Wow. Yeah. So when you were dating um, women, were you asking them, like, what's your purpose? Were you having those deep yes. like conversations like immediately, since yes. this is where your focus was, yes. even when you weren't ready? Yes, honestly, because I knew the type of wife I, I wanted, she had to, to know her purpose. Okay. And she had to at least be at a place where she had a relationship with God. Yeah. You know, and I knew God would eventually reveal a purpose, but I wanted to see her in the flow of that. Okay. You know, in some way. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't sound like you had, had like a lot of ups and downs. So my, my ups and downs were more in the sense of me being very intentional and it not working out. Like okay. the breakups and the disconnection, uh, that's when most of it was like, oh, this is frustrating. Okay. You know, cause I'm putting all of this into mm -hmm. it. I'm putting my, my time, calling, all of that. And, you know, for some reason, my approach of really de dealing with purpose <clears throat> and really talking about you know, where a person is going in life and just having those serious conversations, um, it weeded out a lot of the, the gray time. If you okay, know. okay. And if, if I don't see like a real connection mm -hmm. as to where you're headed, it just never set well with me. Mm. And so that was my way of, of, of weeding out uh, to see if our paths would eventually align, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, yeah, but no, my, my roller coaster ride, um, I got had, um, I place certain people in my life mm -hmm. to make a goal and a focus of pursuing. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, you know, one of my relationships, I remember it was just like, it was like a goal to pursue. And it didn't work out, obviously, um, but God kept a certain standard in my mind, you know, so I would pursue that type of woman. Okay. Even though it didn't work out, we eventually, you know, got together, but it just wasn't uh, a fit. She wasn't real. She wasn't like <laughs> <laughs> she, she was not you, but that helped me weed out a lot, you know. So that that's pretty much was my my journey, my single journey. Um, it sounds like you know I didn't really go through a lot of like up and downs, but it was frustrating. You were frustrated. You were so focused. Sound like I was very focused. on the goal. I was focused so, on the goal. You was just on this straight and narrow, that's which is really good because you have all those husband qualities, like. You, you had a plan. Ooh, but to go from 18 all the way to 37 now, and and finally, like I found you at 36, which was yeah. <laughs> like three months ago. <laughs> you know, when we got married, right? Yeah. Met you eight months ago. Mm -hmm. So 36 years old, that's like 18 extra years. So I had to go through a process of waiting, preparation, you know, um, a, a time of being quiet, mm -hmm. you know, how scripture says, study to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, a period of time where I had to learn, like, okay, like God knows your heart desires, like you're gonna continue to make your request, that's fine, but he knows, like yeah. he knows when it's the time to release. So I had to back out myself and say, you know what? I need to figure out what I'm gonna do as a man. So I'm praying for a wife, but I don't know where I'm, we're going at this point. Gotcha. You know, so 30s, that's when things start getting a little bit more settled. Mm -hmm. I felt I felt like 
you know, like you came at the right time. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so for me, yeah. it started at 22, right? Mm -hmm. I had just got out at, um, I had just got out of a long term relationship. This is about seven years or something. Whoa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was in a relationship for seven years. Seven. Until I was 22. I never been in a relationship in one year. Like all my relationships ended up. The longest one was 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we already different in that sense yeah. because all of my relationships were at least they were all years. Right. I put years into it because I always wanted to be married. So yeah. I wanted like stick it out. Like right. I'm gonna be like endure, be patient. Mm -hmm. No. I do not recommend. <laughs> I do not recommend. I remember um, my dad saying, "Dang, every relationship you treat like a marriage." Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wife, a wife. I feel like when you are a wife, yeah, and you desire to be a wife, like that is the mindset that you go into relationships. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't really say, but for me speaking, like that's how it was for me. Right. So I get out this relationship okay. and I literally turned 22. Okay. I don't know what it was about this year, but I made this decision that I'm going to pivot. And I told God, okay, God, I want to be married 25. Mm -hmm. I gave him a time. <laughs> and I quickly learned, like, it does not work like that. No. Yeah. Like, you cannot put God on your timetable. No, you can't. And so um i got really serious and i said i'm going to start preparing for marriage like i'm going to make it happen i, I was like i'm gonna make it happen by 25. <laughs> oh you wanted to take the ball and put it in your court <laughs> yes. I got you. so I understand. what i did was i so this is my single season this is why i was so frustrating and tormenting because i try to take control got you <laughs> like I'm just having flashbacks of the things I used to say to God and what I try to do to make this <laughs> Okay, but no see. So I started journaling. I start journaling and I start talking to God about the husband I wanted, the life that I desired, and this is still at age twenty two. Okay. And so um it what it really did for me was it brought me closer to God during that time. God. Because now my faith is like kicking in because I'm believing in God for something that I don't see. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm like, I'm believing in you to send my husband. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to prove to God why I, why I am worthy of being married and why I should be married by 25. <laughs> I'm trying to prove to You trying to prove to God? <laughs> oh, you went attorney mode. You, <laughs> you went before the, the God judge. <laughs> So this is my plea. Please answer me. Please answer me. Please answer <laughs> these prayers. And it's serious. Yeah. And so every day I'm talking to God, like, okay, God, like, I want to show you that I'm ready. Yeah. And so I will watch a lot of sermons on marriage. I would read the word on marriage. I would connect with different women that were married. Like, mm -hmm. I want all the counseling, all, yeah. all the wisdom that I could possibly get to yeah. prepare for marriage. Like, I became serious about this. <laughs> oh my God. And that was so such a frustrating season for me because like I said, I put myself on this clock. <laughs> that clock will mess you up. <laughs> Literally ruined my really life. Ruined. It ruined my life because I'm always stressed out. Yeah. And so I was probably single around that time, like during this process of me talking to God. Mm -hmm. He he didn't even let anybody come. <laughs> <laughs> he made it more quiet. He made it more quiet. <laughs> so it was hard to two side Oh baby. <laughs> Oh, my oh God. God. I'm so tickled right oh, now. I'm just thinking about it. Okay, so for like a year. <laughs> the judge didn't say nothing. Y'all was just looking at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm trying to stay focused. Okay, so for like a year of nothing. <laughs> Woo, it's crazy. The wilderness. The, the wilderness. wilderness. So then I can say it. No. <laughs> So now I go through a wilderness season. Yes. Uh-huh. 
to where nothing is happening. I haven't met anyone. And God literally like trying to get them together. <laughs> you yeah, flashbacks? Flashbacks. Ooh. Okay, this is serious. Mm. Okay. So the Lord is quiet. He's not saying anything. I'm not meeting anyone. <laughs> Nobody. So no one got my attention. So this is for a year of just a wilderness. It's just me and the Lord. And I'm just talking about the desires of my heart. And then I'm realizing like, okay, like I can't be this crazy person mm -hmm. that is putting God on a time clock. Yeah. And so it's so for this year, my perception of things began to change. Got you. And so, um, so then someone does come into my life, mm -hmm. and then um, we we both wanted to be married, right? So we talk about marriage, and then God teaches. He starts to deal with my character during the season. Mm. So then he tells, shows me how I have pride, mm. how I am very controlling. Wow. Um, he just starts to reveal like the real me and that person that I was dating starts to like call out like what he sees in me Yeah. and I'm like oh my god like I am not ready but in my mind in my mind I'm still thinking that I'm ready but he this person I was with was literally saying okay you have pride like you were trying to take control mm. of everything um it's the good stuff right here um what else and then the Lord started talking to me about what love actually is. Mm -hmm. And so then I would read uh, 1 Corinthians what's, mm -hmm. what's 13. 13. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing my research on what God says is love. And I realized in my single season that my love was so conditional. Mm -hmm. And wow. God is so big on unconditional, unconditional love. But I had so many conditions because yeah. I did not want to be hurt wow. in my single. Like, I didn't want to be hurt at all. Gotcha. So, and so you God put be, protective measures in place yes. and lay them as conditions just to cover yourself. Yes. I want to think about the other person. Wow. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Like mm. it wouldn't make sense for God to send me some, like my husband during this process because I'm only thinking about myself. This is so good. So, oh my gosh, there's so many questions rolling in my head. Yeah. So you, you mentioned that um, there were things that, that trigger you, like when I was talking about like trauma. Yes. You know, so let's talk about some of the trauma that you dealt with. You mm -hmm. know, I know you talked about some certain things were conditions, but there were some things that you had that was uh, very traumatic during the dating and courting phase. Because, okay, so one, me being very controlling, mm -hmm. um, I wanted the relationship to move in a certain direction. Cause I'm like, no, we are intentionally dating. So there are steps to this. Okay. And when I meet when the men that I met in the past, well, so to make things clear, every guy that I dated, it was for years. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. it was so, right. yeah. Right. So for like, right before you came, it was like, okay. <laughs> I was more, I was mature and I was ready. So those didn't last because I could see like this right. wasn't going anywhere. Gotcha. But in the beginning of my process, I had so much faith and hope that I was, I wanted it to go somewhere. Like I was trying to make it go somewhere. You're trying to make it. I was trying to make it go somewhere. So I, that's why I stayed in those relationships. So, okay. Um, mm -hmm. okay. So the trauma was that I would meet someone, I met someone <laughs> and he was not ready. Okay. to be married like okay. he like you said he wanted to be in his career he wanted to be more established but i'm saying no we don't need that mm -hmm. and right. yes we do because <laughs> <laughs> i'm just thinking about marriage I, and, and that's the thing i'm so glad you said it because i've noticed in my dating and courting phase that <laughs> there's a lot of women that said you know they just really want to connect and be in a relationship and be married but i'm telling you like men, it, men think totally different yes so it's, that was it's like, no, I know you want to help build and grow with me, but there's a certain point in a man's life when he's just really ready. Yeah. You know, and it's hard for men to really identify that until they're like fully like in their like in their purpose. Purpose, yeah. You know. So, so I would date people that were not in their purpose uh, yet. You know, like they're in the process, like God is taking through them through their journey. And it's like I'm trying to skip the process. Yeah. And that leaves both of us frustrated. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so it was just very frustrating during that process. And God really just revealed to me, like, 
all my flaws. <laughs> like everything that I was doing, and he was really trying to just show me like, let it go. <laughs> like let go of your timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let go of the plans that you have for yourself. Right. And I'm going to make it happen when the time is right. Yeah. And what really freed me was this scripture in, was it Jeremiah 29, 11? Mm -hmm. Somehow I came across that scripture <laughs> on my journey where it says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah. Plans of peace, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope, a future mm -hmm. and a sound mind. Yeah. That changed my life. Mm -hmm. It didn't hit, but it didn't really hit until I went through my process of becoming whole. Okay. So I knew that scripture will always speak to me, but around the age of 29, mm -hmm. it started making sense because I had so many like felt, <laughs> you know, it just, it was just the relationships were not going the way that I wanted them to go. So question for you, how long did it take from you to go from being hurt to becoming whole? Let's see. So... Probably like, well, I guess until 29, right before I met you. And you got hurt at what age? Early in my teenage years. Like, really? I, yeah. Yeah, because you know when you deal with like cheating, like I got cheated on and, um, you know, just disappointments will hurt you in itself. Exactly. And so I think once I finally ended, got out of some some long-term relationships and just got with myself mm -hmm. and allowed the Lord to just heal me and make me whole. Right. And I feel like that did not happen until 29. So you went from teenage years all the way to 29 of being hurt. Not I hurt all the time, healed. but okay. you know, just going through my journey of holiness. It was like a literal journey yeah. where and it's crazy because I used to always say, God, like, prepare me for marriage. Like, yeah. make me into this wife. And I thought I wasn't seeing any fruit of it right. because I wasn't married. Right. But all along, it started the moment I prayed. Mm -hmm. It was just like, he really started, when I prayed, God, I'm ready to be a wife. Um, prepare me for marriage. From 22 to 29 was the process. Gotcha. But I thought that he was going to do it quickly. Okay. But it looked different because he had so much to get out of me. Like right. he had to teach me like to let go and to trust him. Right. So I learned faith during that journey. Mm -hmm. I learned to trust God during the journey. Mm -hmm. And now being on the other side of it, mm -hmm. it's like, man, he answered my prayers the moment I prayed. Mm -hmm. I just was trying to skip the process. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to like immediately go to the promise. <gasps> Come on, you saying a lot right <laughs> <laughs> So. Mm. Wow. So you wanted to, to make sure that you solidified this marriage by 25. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? And you had to wait another four years. I had to wait another four years. Wow. I got married on the fifth year after that. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Um, I think it's it's a, so many lessons you can learn just by what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk about just giving the plans back to God, your yeah. plans and ideas back to God. It just makes things so much easier than it trying does. to fully take happen. control and make make things happen. And the thing is, we can't make it happen. Yeah. We no. can't. No. Um, like the scripture says, for I know the plans that I have for you. So that means he knows the timing <laughs> right. that, he, that he has planned for us to get married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even in Ecclesiastes, he talked about mm -hmm. so everything, there's a season, season and a time, time to every purpose. Yep. So every purpose your heart desires and, you know, the seasons will shift mm -hmm. at some point in time. It's just figuring out a way to weather the season, yeah. if you will. And a lot of people, they, they tend to get hurt because they're so busy trying to just, all right, I got to get in this thing. Like, this is what I want. I'm going to make this thing happen. See, that was me. And, I, and I've, <laughs> I've been there before, too, when it comes to um, just like business moves and different things like that. Um, and even certain relationships, like I really wanted to make it happen. I would like over invest. I would mm. over invest my time, my, mm -hmm. my money, resources, mm -hmm. uh, just to try to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I've been there, mm -hmm. you know, and it never feels good. So, so yeah. what would you do differently in your single season if you could go back to it? Ooh, if I could do anything different, um, I will continue to stay in the point of just fully trusting God. Yeah, but how do you do that? 
Well, honestly, you have to deny yourself from, from your flesh. And when I, come, when I mean that, it's like tr totally trusting in God, knowing that, okay, I still desire this, but it's totally saying, okay, I'm not gonna release urgency on this thing. Mm. You know, I'm gonna make sure I, I fully believe and know that God is gonna come through. Yeah. And and with that mentality, you begin to rehearse, you know, the the the, the faith that God will continue to come through mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But you know, I would be continue to be more even more intentional than I was, even though I was asking questions like during certain like dating situations. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I felt like there were times where sometimes my true desires will get in the way of the reality. Okay. And what I mean by that is I remember one relationship, you know, I, I pursued this woman, I pursued her and, and I would get like general responses and I would try to figure out where we are in our relationship, you know, and, and ask like, how do you feel about me? And, you know, our response would be like, you know, I'm, she was still trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. And, and any time a woman says that, like, oh, I'm still trying to, you know, figure this thing. After a few dates, like, that could be an alarm. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like uh, there's a certain time it takes for a woman to get to know a person. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. When it comes to women, like, y'all seem to know, like, a little bit more. I think it goes more. for men and women, though. I agree. I feel like when you know, you know. When you know, you know. I agree That's with what that. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, but it, it shouldn't be like you just kind of <clears throat> hear and there are no answers being provided. Yeah, you so need clarity. If, if, it, if I had to do it all over again, I would cut off that time. I would say, okay, let me allow you some time so you can figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then I can do my own thing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I would do different. Yeah. What about you? What would you do different? Oh, my God. I would stop tormenting myself. Like I would have never put myself on a timetable. Yeah. I would have just um, gave it all to God, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're saying the same thing. Um, I would have lost how, all control. How do you give it to God? Like when when your true desire is, is marriage. Is, is marriage. How do how do you give that to God? I think there comes a place where you just totally like surrender <sighs> after like you keep trying to make things happen for yourself for so long you just I feel like the Lord will, will allow you to keep trying to make it happen so yeah. you can so you can finally see that it's not going to work when you do it. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> and it's not going to happen until his timing. Yeah. And so I think that I will still date. Right. Um, I will still have fun but i wouldn't i would be intentional but once i realize that we are not on the same page mm -hmm. like you when some if a man tells me hey i'm not ready for marriage yeah that should have been my exit I gotcha. instead of like staying um hoping that maybe things will change do you feel like people date for different reasons yes i do and i feel like <laughs> I just feel like in dating, you have to use a lot of discernment. Yeah, yeah. You have to use a lot of wisdom and ask those, ask all the questions that you truly desire. That's true. And I feel like it really needs to be uh, like a really real understanding that whenever you meet someone, are you dating or are you actually courting? Mm -hmm. Because the difference is courting is pursuing someone to be married. Yeah. You know, when you're dating, um, I said this before, but I don't specialize as an event planner. Mm -hmm. So I never wanted to be the person that always set these dates and that's all we do. Mm -hmm. This is go on dates. Mm -hmm. Spend money, have fun, kiki, mm -hmm. and then we do it again. It's like, I mean, but there's seasons. This going? Some people, like, I enjoyed this season of just dating. But I don't know. I guess it's different. Like you said, everyone dates for different reasons. You just have to see if you can both are in the same season. Yeah. Like, if what Very you. Key. Like, if y'all are in alignment. And so, I would also just spend time with God yeah. and allow when he reveals different things about me that needed to change, mm -hmm. and just sit in that. It just, just allow it. God to, I would, I would go back yeah. and say, God, as long as it takes, however right. you want to do this, like, God, give me a spirit that's not anxious for anything. That's good. It's really good. And help me to be content. Like, Lord, just help me on my journey. Yeah. And I would just, 
I mean, it's a faith process. It, re it really is. Like, and we have this, this power of choice. Like I think in my 20s, guys started to show me, he showed me, he was like, the greatest power you can control is the power of choice. Yeah. And so however you make your decisions, that's that will create a whole nother path. It does. Like decisions that we make. Yeah, it, it's very key. It's key. And so, you know, I had to get to a point in my life, you know, in my single phase that I have to, you know, give my life to God. Mm -hmm. Like really, really sacrifice because he would speak. He, he would speak speaking. during the, mm -hmm. the, the quiet times, during the quiet moments. And, you know, it just, it helped me to weed out and save a lot of time, honestly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say my longest um, relationship was 11 months. Um, other relationships I think about, I think I was in another relationship for four months. Another one was like like six months. Mm -hmm. um, I think another one was probably like seven. So you think it was because you spent so much time with the father? He was you would listen to what he said. Definitely, definitely. See, mine wasn't like that. Yeah, definitely. Like I I I knew if I went at the relationship one hundred percent, you know, have that prayer time with God and go at it full throttle, you know, in pursuit, you know, I knew that I would get the results meant for me. Yeah. Not the results I desire. Even though I desire for it to work out, I pursue God in a way, you know, in my all my relationships to the fact that he would reveal mm -hmm. the, the answer and the reason a lot sooner. Okay. So that's why it made it easier to weed out the wrong So you went in there with that mindset. Every single one. Well, mine was different because I'm getting to know who God is at the same time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> believe in God for my spouse. Right. So, God is really trying to, he was really trying to reveal himself to me first. Yeah, I got you. But I'm more focused on, God, you know, you just make this happen. <laughs> I, I need you to I'm make see, this happen. I'm this... seeking you because right. I need <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. were seeking the, the result, the end result. Yes, instead of seeking God. Woo! Wow. And so God is like, this you can't even get to that until you know me. Yeah, yeah. Until you have your relationship with me. So I'm like doing dual things at the same time. I'm learning about God. I'm I'm cultivating my relationship with God. Yeah. And I'm also trying to cultivate <laughs> and make relationships happen. <laughs> make no, not make relationships, make marriage happen at yeah. the same time. <laughs> so that's why it was so frustrating for me. I wish that I would have just gave all my energy to God yeah. and to really focus on his plan for me. Like, God, what is my purpose? Yeah. I make marriage. Gotcha. Like, kind of like my God. Mm. Like, I think I kind of made an idol out of marriage. Mm. Like, it was such a, uh, it was so heavy on me. Like, it was such a strong desire yeah. for me because I, I was one of those women, like, I think I did have like the fairy tale mindset. And because I said I wanted to be married by 25, right. that was top priority. Like I'm getting closer and closer to this age and I'm yeah. not seeing the results. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. but if I would have said, God, my relationship with God is my top priority, like things would have been so different. Yeah, so different. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a journey. It's a journey. It really is a journey yeah. to figuring out who you are, mm -hmm. um, where you're going, why you're here in life. And, you know, it's natural to want to be married, mm -hmm. you know, so that is nothing wrong with that. No. Um, but, it, it, you know, when it talks about, there's a scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says all these other things will, will be, be added. added. Yeah. And, that, and that's the hard part to get to. It's like, all right, I'm a man and you're a woman. You know, you have these, these desires to want to be married. The time clock is, is ticking because for women, we're thinking about kids. Thinking about kids I'm like, I'm going to have my first baby <laughs> at 27. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so all of that's going through your head. And it's, that's a natural thing that those are practical um, ideas and, and a reality. Mm -hmm. And then you have the doctors saying, like, if you don't have it by then, yeah. then this could be this. But we really have to put our trust in God. We have to. We really have to depend, not lean on to our own understanding. You know, but in all our ways to acknowledge him and he's gonna direct that path. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just glad that that you know we were able to share this. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like there is a lot of people that might be in your position. Yeah. You know, growing up, really have high hopes for marriage. Even me, I had high hopes for marriage. Um, but I didn't go through like a, a real extreme roller coaster ride. Yeah, mine you know? was extreme. <laughs> but but it, it led to a good place because you 
if God put you into a place where it was like, okay, you found him. I yes, yeah, that's you, what I was trying to get to. Yeah, also. you found him. I found God in my single season. Yeah. Because I constantly kept hitting these walls of like nothing happening the way I was trying to make it happen, mm -hmm. or not even just make it happen, but the way I imagined things to happen. Right. And it caused me to keep running um, to the feet of God. So yeah. I'm constantly going to God, like, okay, God, like, yeah. so what is happening? Like, I right. pray. Right. And that's another thing. My faith was so high. So I was in expectation right. that God would answer because I believe mm -hmm. that with God, I, when I was reading those scriptures, mm -hmm. like I said, I was I was trying to make, prepare myself to be a wife. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm like, you said that with you all things are possible to those that believe. Yeah. So I'm like, God, I believe in you. Why am I not seeing results? You were like, ask and it shall, shall be, be given it? unto you. <laughs> Seek and you shall so find. <laughs> I had all my scriptures. I wrote them out. And I, I had like high expectations for God to answer for right. me when it comes to marriage. Right. Wow. But then I just it just kept reading that like the word, mm -hmm. and I just like oh like Ooh, God is word. not this genie yeah. in the bottle. Yeah. So He revealed Himself to me on my journey. Yeah. And his That's question. what makes it so special. Ooh. And you got your fairy tale story. I did. I still, <laughs> God still answered everything that I've asked him for, mm -hmm. just not in my timing, in his timing. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that I went, that this was my testimony mm -hmm. because now I am better. Yeah. Like I learned patience. Right. I learned how to trust God. Mm -hmm. I learned like like I saw the scriptures, but it became my reality. Like yeah. I had to, he had to walk me had through, walk through those that scriptures. <laughs> like no, <laughs> like you, this, you're gonna live. You're gonna see how real I am. Ooh, like yes. everything God says in His Word, He proved it to me. Every single thing. Every single Ooh. thing. Oh my gosh! And I, it was it was still tormenting. Yeah. Because I'm still dealing with like I'm not seeing fruit. But it's beautiful at the same time because I'm seeing God as my father. Yes. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like growing up, you know, some people may have fathers, some people may not. But whenever you, you have a father, like a father will, will lead you. Like and correct you, you. And correct you. He will, of course, correct you. All of that. <laughs> he will <laughs> like, lead you to the place that you need to be yeah. so you can have what you desire. Exactly. And sometimes you don't even understand, like, why is the father leading you this way? Yes. It's just, just it's that, that hand of trust. Mm. You know, like taking him by the hand and just saying, okay, just lead me. Lead me. Um, what is that scripture? He, where God, oh, he says, my ways are not your ways. Yeah. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Right. That was a big thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. It's not. <laughs> like, <laughs> our ways are totally different because yeah. if I would have orchestrated my life, I would have got married at 25 and I had a baby at 27. Mm -hmm. But I would have missed everything that we need for our marriage. Yeah. And it gave so much character. You mentioned character building earlier, character building but the the, the, ide the identity of who we are is very key, and also that character. Because there's times in marriage scenarios where you have to pull out certain characteristics yeah. that you learn, mm -hmm. like patience, mm -hmm. like peace, love, love, love unconditional, unconditional love. love. Like because we believe that love is a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is a decision that you make. And in order to have an agape love, which is unconditional love, mm -hmm. then you're giving even when you don't feel like it. Yes. And you're always sacrificing. Like, I had to learn sacrifice. Yeah. There were so many things I learned in my single season. Yeah. Yeah. It was so, so necessary. <laughs> it's just a journey. So I would just say, <clears throat> stay in the process. Mm -hmm. Like, do not, I used to hear pastors say that all the time. Do yeah. not abort the process. Don't abort because it. There mm -hmm. is a promise good. at the end. That's good. God has a promise for us. Yeah. And like you said, uh, on Dear Future Wifey, you said every waiting season has an expiration, expiration. date. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. And the way that we wait and the way that we trust God in our process is really just going to make things, it's going to make or break you. It really is. It broke me many times because <laughs> I kept making the decision like, only, I'm trying to I'm trying to make like have control. And only the strong survive. Mm -hmm. Like you can, like I said earlier, you can easily get into a relationship scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, but when you talk about a marriage, 
marriage is tied to your destiny. Yes. Marriage is tied to your purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's it's worth the wait. It's worth like, it's so it. Worth it's so the valuable, you know, and, and there's a reward in it. The reward. <laughs> there is like, a reward. God will give you when that when he says, I will give you the desires of your heart. Yeah, yeah. If you seek See, after him. Yes. 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 That's the part. That's the right part there. right there. Because a lot of people say they, they're gonna get the desires, but they don't want to do the seeking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's too much work. God is true to his word. Mm -hmm. Like he can't change his word. It's gonna, it's just today yeah. and forever. Like it's always gonna be the same. Yeah. And we be trying to change things. Right. Man. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna it's work. It's not gonna work, so. Yeah, and he knows your heart's desires. Like he really knows your in depth, your deep secrets. Yes. You know, so when you the pray. Secret petitions yeah, of those, your heart. them secret petitions. He knows it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's okay. It's okay to give that to him. But you have to give it to him in faith. Yes. Give it to him in trust. In trust. You know, like when you trust, that means, okay, I could back away from this. Yeah. And that means like when you back away from it, don't try to pick it up again. Right. So that was my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I, why was I like this? <laughs> I really had a controlling problem. You were made to be a wife. Like, yes, that's, that's why I was frustrated. That's why you were frustrated. And sometimes, like, you can carry good things, but mm -hmm. it can lead to frustration in wrong seasons. Mm -hmm. I'm almost mad. <laughs> that's it. You carry wife qualities. It just wasn't the season. It wasn't the season for it. So, like, there's a lot of people who are watching this who are actually wives. Like, you're a wife like, now. You're a wife right now. But there's a season yeah. to be married. To be married. So continue to stay a wife. Yes. And carry yourself as a wife. Continue to carry yourself as the woman that you are. Yes. But there will be a season where God connects you with that man for yeah. destiny. Yeah. And he will find you. If you're watching this right now and, you know, we plan to release this on Valentine's Day. And we want you to know if you're watching this that obviously, as we always say, if God remembered us, he will remember you. And just, just walk in that faith, walk in that confidence, that hope mm -hmm. that with God, there is nothing too hard for him. There is nothing too and hard you, for him. And you that. are valuable. I believe that God created everybody to be married. Yeah. That That's my personal belief. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, whether you believe it or not, or whether you desire it, yeah, that, that's it on definitely. you. But I really believe that, you know, he, he set it up so he can carry out his plan. Mm. You know, like in the, in the beginning, like he had Adam and Eve and then he created a man and woman for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, because it's for his, his fulfillment of his plan. So we can create generations of his glory, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's my personal belief. But if you're watching this, just know that uh, we are concerned <laughs> about you. We are thinking of you. Uh, we just wanted to share our story about our singleness. And just remember, if God remembered us, he remembered, he remembered you. you. You guys have a good one.